Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Memorial Day. Uh, tomorrow is the day that we take time to remember and to honor those who died in the service to our country. And uh, in a little bit, we will hold them in a special prayer. Welcome to Unity of Charlotte. My name is Reverend Lisa Herklotz. I co-minister here with my husband, Reverend Jim Ernston, who will be delivering the message um, shortly. And I want to say welcome to all of you here in person. Welcome to all of those joining us on uh, Zoom. And if you happen to be watching this uh, later on the YouTube, we are glad you tuned in and we hope you enjoy the message. We like to read our mission statement to remind ourselves of the purpose that we come together as Unity of Charlotte. So please, if you'll join me, Unity of Charlotte is the place where we nurture a deep and mature experience of God through the practice of unity principles. Simply put, we are here to love, grow, and serve. Yes, indeed. And we have anyone here for the first time. All right. Well, welcome. You're all you're all brand new because we're fresh and new every day, right? So I'm glad to see everyone here. Uh, there's so many ways to check on what's going on at Unity of Charlotte. You can go onto our website. You can sign up for our newsletter, browse our Facebook page, and watch past services on YouTube. And also note that we have more information on events that are going on on our bulletin board. So things that don't get announced here and things that do get announced here will also be on our bulletin board. So be sure to check that out on your way in or out. All right, so let's now take a moment to go into prayer. I invite you to just take, take a second to gently close your eyes and turn your attention within. Find a moment of stillness as we open together in prayer. Tomorrow is a time, but we're going to take that time today to honor the memories of all those who lost their lives in service to our country. Memorial Day. Today we remember them and we bless them for the ultimate gift they gave for the greater purpose of peace. We also extend blessings to those families that are grieved their passing, and we hold them in our hearts with love. Today, we acknowledge and claim the power of peace that comes from God within. Visioning this peace, awakening in all humanity, leading us into a new consciousness of our spiritual oneness, where there will no more be need of war or violence of any kind. May this peace be with those who passed on, those who still carry their memories in their lives, and within all of us who gather to honor and bless the Christ presence that unites us as one family. So I invite you to take a moment of silence as we bless and honor those who have passed. In the name, the power, and the presence. Comfort. I am comforted by the embrace of divine love. When someone dear to me transitions, I may feel fearful and alone. I do not hide from my feelings, nor seek to numb them even if I have tempted, if I feel tempted. Grief has come to pass, but it sh cannot pass until I acknowledge and feel it. Opening to all my heart is holding I feel a presence far stronger than pain. Even in deepest grief, 
divine love is strong within me, lifting me, making me feel, making my feelings bearable. As I feel comforted by this love, I become increasingly aware of the peace and strength in my heart. Even in my grief, I am grateful to trust the healing comfort of divine love. It blesses me today and will be an ongoing presence as I need it. My love for those I lost is eternal and unchanging, just like God's love for me. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. La palabra de hoy es consuelo. Me consuela el abrazo del amor divino. Cuando fallece un ser querido, tal vez sienta miedo y soledad. Decido no esconder, esconder mi adormecer, ni adormecer mis sentimientos. El duelo es un proceso y reconocerlo y sentirlo es esencial para superarlo. Cuando abro mi corazón para dar cabida a todas las emociones, permito una presencia más fuerte que el dolor. Incluso en el dolor profundo, el amor divino me eleva y hace que mis sentimientos sean soportables. Abrazado por este amor, soy más consciente de la paz y la fuerza que hay en mi corazón. Además de reconocerlo, el dolor, agradezco el consuelo sanador del amor divino que me bendice hoy y sigue siendo una presencia constante. Mi amor por los que perdí es eterno e inmutable, al igual que el amor de Dios por mí. Bienaventurados los que lloran, porque ellos recibirán consolación. El libro de Mateo 5:4. We are studying this week, or we're talking about, at least from the lectern, from um, Eric Butterworth. Eric Butterworth, Spiritual Economics. If you haven't read it, leave right now. Go get it and read it today. It is a seminal work of unity and um, something that we want to talk about this month. So, let me start us off. There's an important moment in your life when you discover for yourself the great truth that things may be happening around you or to you, but only things which, the only things that count are the things that happen in you. That is the truth. That's what I'm saying. This is, that is the truth that Eric Butterworth is speaking to, and we're going to talk about it today. I called it the treasure within, and we're going to talk about that. We see that treasure chest there, but we're talking about the treasure within. We're talking about that treasure within. So we're going to talk about it in three different, three different segments. We're going to talk about it in terms of trusting with all of your heart, trusting with all of your heart. We're also going to talk about that still, small voice within you and then we're also going to talk about learning to trust you're going to hear today and um i'm not going to even apologize you're going to hear the word trust about a thousand times today because of all the quotes because of all of the stuff that we're going to talk about so listen to all those ideas about trusting and that treasure from within or that treasure in your heart so number one trusting with all of your heart within the old testament within the hebrew scriptures it says this in the lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path i am going to ask you to forgive all of the he's and the hymns and the and the Lord's and the Old Testament language here as we get to the bottom of what this truth is within our life. So let's look at each one of those. Let's look at each one of those statements. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the divine. 
I have a little bit of an allergy to the word Lord myself. I don't know how you feel about that when you're reading Bible passages. Trust in the divine, the creative power, God, if you will, but trust in the divine with all your heart is what that is saying. Lean not on your own understanding. Let's not trust our humanity necessarily. Let's not trust that ego sense within our lives. Let's move within. So it's not looking without, but it's looking within. That next part, in all ways, acknowledge him. To me, this says more about being able to trust and and this process that we're going to talk about today in terms of learning to trust, but doing it, but setting up a habit within our lives that allows us to find that truth within our lives, that truth within our heart. And he shall deliver your path, knowing that the divine presence will show us the way. That's what that means to me. So I've done a little bit of metaphysical interpretation here, you'll see. I've used a few different words, but that was Proverbs right there. I think about, not always, but sometimes I think about my college courses that I've taken over the years. And maybe it's only because they had such an impact on me. One of those college courses was philosophy when I was a sophomore in college. And as part of philosophy, we learned that oh, didactic process, if that was the right word, we also learned deductive reasoning. Does anyone have, did anyone else learn deductive reasoning in college, right? Yeah, a whole lot of yeses. That deductive reasoning were things such as Christmas always falls on December 25th. And if today is December 25th, today must be Christmas, right? Deductive reasoning. It all makes sense. Most of the time. Because there are fallacies within deductive reasoning as well, dogs have ears. In fact, all dogs have ears. I have ears. Therefore, I must be a dog. I can't argue with that. That, that. That's the case. So we need to be careful with that. But the deductive reasoning, I'm going to go through a little bit of a, a process myself. Because as I was researching this talk today, as I was working with the ideas of the treasure within... I asked myself the question, where is God? Where is God? Does anybody, does anybody else have a conversation with themselves like I do? It's like, I go back and forth with myself sometimes. I ask myself the question, then I answer it. And then, but what about this, Jim? Um, so this is what was happening to me probably Wednesday. It was I asked myself the question, where is God? Where is God within my world? Where do I believe God is? And I, and I answered myself, I said, well, definitely God is in my heart. But that's not the only place. God is in, I, I answered myself in this conversation, God's also in that sunset, that beautiful sunset. God's in those uh, Japanese maples out there that we walk through, those gorgeous trees out there. God is in nature for me as well. God is in my mind. God is in my heart. I kept saying yes, 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 every time I posed this question to myself. God is in my gut. When I have a gut feeling, God is in my big toe. Yes. I just kept answering yes. So let me pose to you, is there anywhere that God isn't. No. Correct answer. God is the creative force. 
the divine, whatever you want to call that force, that creativity, everywhere. But we're focused on mainly it is within ourselves. So that's the first if in my deductive reasoning was that God is everywhere. If God is everywhere, hang on to that because we're going to get to the second part of that um, deductive reasoning. Eric Butterworth said, we are spiritual beings with the allness of infin infinite mind within us. We are spiritual beings with the allness of infinite mind, infinite mind being that other term for God, the allness of that creative force. That's what it's saying. That's what the author is saying. That's what Eric Butterworth is saying. The answer is not to get more of what God represents out there into our life, is what the author is saying. We're not moving things from out there into our life. We're realizing that it's already there, is what Eric is saying. That's the discovery. That's the big truth. It is already there. The treasure is within. It's already here. So that's the first part of it. The second part of it, let's explore this. What is it that you want? What? Think about it just for a second. And everybody's going to have a different answer. We're not going to say it out loud. So this is a very personal thing. What, what in your life is it that you need right now, that you want right now, that seems to be missing right now? What is it? And now that you've thought about it for a second, we talked about this in one of our Saturday classes. We went and we, we had that discussion within... Um, affirmative prayer, how that is the first place that we go to, is identifying that perceive. And the reason I use perceive is we lack nothing in this world, but as humans, we, there is a perception that sometimes we are missing something, right? We are missing health sometimes. We're sometimes, so some of these things might be what came to mind when I asked you that question. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's love. Maybe it's friendship. Maybe it's an accomplishment. Maybe it's a career that you really want to take off. Those might be things in your life that you want. And I would propose that divine spirit, God, the universe, the creative force, because that force is within you, because that want is within you, is saying, yes, yes, yes. You want that health? Here it is. You want that prosperity, that abundance? Yes. It's there. So that was the second of my ifs. If God is everywhere is here if god is saying yes to those wants in my life as well if my greatest desire is an open book that is my heart in this heart space right here and right now then why are we looking out there because the treasure is within God's here, my want is here, this is where I focus. This is not like the dog and the ears. This, is the, this, is, this one makes sense to me. This reasoning makes total sense to me. So we have, within, within Western culture, we have one of the greatest 20 first century gurus who wrote this idea. I trust in the ebb and flow of the universe. I trust that life is bigger than what I can see. I trust that there is a divine order beyond my control. And I trust that no matter what happens, I will be all right. 
Does anyone know who that guru is? Hi, we got one yes. Anybody else know who this is? It's that guru, Oprah. <laughs> She's full of truths, and I found that one as well. Eric Butterworth also said, all things are possible under divine law. All things are possible under divine law. Well, let's come back to the Bible as well. Let's come back to the New Testament this time. Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, and, and within, the, within the Gospel of Matthew, it was uh, Sermon on the Mount, it was um, the Beatitudes. These were the things that were uh, floating through the, uh, the Gospel of Matthew at the time. And the crowd was, this was, like, this was like question and answer period within the New Testament. And people were coming up to Jesus and saying, yeah, that's all good, but what about? Yeah, that's good, but what about this thing in my life? You know, I, my career's not taken off. My, I'm not having a real good relationship with my significant other. I, you know, I, I need more, I need more, I need more, you know, thinking outside, outside, outside. I need more stuff. His answer, according to the Gospel of Matthew, was that with man, this is impossible. But that with God, all things are possible. Do you see the difference in that? He's saying with man, or with men, this is impossible. With that outside consciousness, it might feel like a struggle. If you're incorporating ego and that white knuckle struggle, saying, I can do this on my own, it might seem impossible. It, it might work out sometimes. You might be able to really, you know, trudge through a thing with your own power. I can do this by myself. But with God, all things are possible, is what this says. With the understanding that we are divine, that knowing, that knowing where God is, again, knowing where God is, and whatever we can conceive, whatever we can conceive, we can have. Looking for that treasure within, all things are possible. And I just love that. All things are possible. So with this, I sat with these ideas. I saw, sat with that deductive reasoning. And I said, what is going to be my affirmation for this week? What am I going to repeat to myself? What am I going to ask my community, you, each one of you, to remind yourself during the week? It's this, that I trust the divine within. Can we say that together? I trust the divine within. One more time. I trust the divine within. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Have you, have you been able to move from your head down into your heart with this affirmation? If not today, then maybe in the days ahead. Conceptually, yeah, I trust in the divine within. But when I know it in my heart, that's when stuff is going to happen. So we talked about that first thing. Let's talk about that second thing, the second thing, that still small voice within our heart or within our lives. Within the unity movement, it, divine mind, divine ideas, wisdom shows up in a lot of the teachings of unity. Divine mind is that, is that heavenly realm, that spiritual realm, which Oh, I don't know if I want to use the word create, but has, but emanates maybe is another word. Um, and Jim, you and I can have this discussion. Those divine ideas. So we have divine mind, we have divine ideas. We utilize those divine ideas within our lives. That shows up as wisdom. My definition, the gospel according to Reverend Jim, is that that is the wisdom in our lives, are those divine ideas from that spiritual realm, that divine mind as well. That creative power in the universe, 
spirit in action, God, that is the divine mind. Divine ideas, on the other, other hand, are the concepts and images coming from the divine mind. And wisdom is that, is that thing, are those ideas that show up for us in the best of times. And maybe that's when we're quiet. And maybe that's when we're sitting, not distracted. Author Angela Walker utilizes this idea and she calls it kind of, she calls it this idea of a metaphysical whisper in our lives. Remember, we're talking about the still small voice. First of all, the still small voice in my life, I'm not going to tell you what the still small voice is in your life. It is not a voice. I don't get a voice in my ear that says, turn left here, Reverend Jim. That, that doesn't happen. The still small voice is the metaphysical whisper in my life. That's the internal ooh from time to time. I hadn't thought of that. The ahas, that is the metaphysical whisper that author Angela Walker talks about. Just listen to the still small voice, she says. This is the mind to trust. This is the divine consciousness speaking, not the ego. Boy, it just all says it right there in that run-on sentence. How do I know the difference? How do I know the difference between that still small voice and maybe the ego or the outside world? Things that are going... We've got to admit that marketing from the outside world affects us. I would have no idea that I really want to drive a Lexus if it wasn't for marketing, right? So we've got to admit that in our human world, we are affected by marketing. That's the outside coming in. Divine mind is to be trusted from within. Peace. When I... what. The, re the way that I know, let me put it this way, the way that I know the difference between that outside and that inside still small voice is the peace that I feel when that aha comes up. That calm, that knowing, it is. It just works for me at that time. There's an assurance of that this is the right thing. Um, but for me, I'm telling you that I find it in silence. I find it when I'm quiet. One of the things that we talk about within the unity movement is peace, or is, is prayer and meditate, the other P word, prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation. Meditation for me is going into the silence and being open to that still, small voice. The Apostle Paul in the um, book of Romans said, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. As you trust, you will be filled with peace and joy. Again, back to our affirmation. I'm pointing up here. I should be pointing back here because that's what you're looking at. Affirmation, I trust the divine within so that was the still small voice. The third thing I want to talk about today is the idea of learning to trust. This is a process. It's not just boom and, and we're there. This is a process. Knowing the truth and the truth will set you free. So knowing this truth, Charles Fillmore said in his book, Teach Us to Pray, and I'm just going to read this out loud. We find that we must train our mind in trust. 
Look persistently and continuously for God, for all, to God for all things. When you turn your attention to spirit, your mind makes contact with the realm of ideas. There's that idea of mind and ideas again. Very much above your level of common thinking. And when you strike this mental stratosphere, you are tremendously lifted up. That is Charles Fillmore, co-founder along with his wife Myrtle within the unity movement. How do we know when we can trust this process? How is it that we know we can trust it? When do we know we can trust it? Well, if you've hung around me at all, you already know that my number one go-to toolbox thing, if we have a toolbox full of spiritual things, my number one go-to is meditation. If you ask me a question, I say, have you been meditating? Have you been meditating? That's going to be where I will initially send you. In fact, there's a, a, a great story. Um, Wayne Dyer is really good friends with Deepak Chopra, or was really good friends. And their families were good friends. Wayne Dyer was going through something. And they're both really heavy duty meditation believers, teachers. And they use it within their life. Wayne Dyer was having an issue. Things were going wrong. He was publishing something and things were going off. And he needed to talk to somebody. So he reached out and talked to his good friend, Deepak Chopra. And he was describing the, the worldly events of this, right? The outside events. You know, this is going, and they said this, and they did that, and they went back on their promise with me, and it's just not working out the way that I thought it should. And Deepak said to Wayne, he says, are you meditating? And Wayne says, well, no, you listen to me. They did this, and they did that, and, you know, I, I'm looking to you for some, for some, you know, help me here. What do I do? And again, Deepak says, when was the last time you went into meditation? And Wayne says, let me talk to your wife. <laughs> he, didn't want, he didn't want to hear it anymore. He wanted to go to, a, he wanted somebody just to, to tell them, yeah, the outside world is giving you a hard time. And poor Wayne, right? Meditation is the point of that story. Meditation. He kept saying over and over again, Deepak Chopra, you need to move into meditation. The ideas will come to you. The wisdom will come to you. That's where you need to be. I trust the divine within. I thought about meditation in terms of the, the uh, maybe a metaphor for this within my life. The metaphor for meditation when stuff is going on within my life. And I thought of the idea of, because when we're talking about meditation, what we're talking about is, is the idea that we're calming, we're sitting, we're calming down our thoughts. Sometimes within the Buddhist tradition, it's called, you know, um, calming that monkey mind. We're slowing down that stream of thoughts within our lives. We're not stopping them. We're, we're simply watching them, <sighs> taking that breath and slowing things down enough to where we can then hear those divine ideas, that wisdom coming into our lives. So the metaphor that I thought of was, and know that I have not been to a disco in 30 years, but is the disco in my 20s. You got the loud music, you got the lights going on, you've got the crush of bodies, you've got that energy going on, right? Can you hear what somebody's telling you? Usually during that cacophony of, well, these days they don't call them a disco, but it would be a rage these days, right? You're in the middle of a rage. You're, you're not, you can't. You can't hear what you need to hear at the time. It's only if I left that rage, went out to my car, shut the door, took a breath and sat in silence. That's 
the metaphor for what we need to do in our daily life. Today we talked about, here's that treasure chest. We talked about that treasure within, but we talked about trusting with all your heart. We talked about that still small voice. We talked about learning to trust. So know, know that I love you, I bless you, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I behold the divine in you. Namaste. We're going to move into our meditation at this point. So I invite you to wiggle around. So one of the great lessons I learned from the Zen masters when I learned, was learning to uh, meditate was they always spent the first couple of minutes wiggling around, stretching, sitting, finding the very perfect spot. And then they close their eyes. So I invite you to find that spot. Find the spot where your hands are going to rest for the next couple of minutes. Let your shoulders come down and relax. Soften the muscles around your face. And with this experience, I'm going to ask you to find your breath. Where on your body, in your body, does that breath affect? You might feel that in your belly as your belly goes in and out. Your breath might be in your chest, and that's where you're going to watch it. You're going to feel it as your chest expands with that inhale. You're going to feel it as it contracts with that exhale. You might feel your clothing change pressure. That's what you're watching. That's what you're focusing on for the next few moments as the thoughts begin to slow down in your mind. You feel that inhale. You feel that exhale. And because we are human, thoughts will still come into our mind we allow that, we don't fight against it, but we return to our we return to our breath once again. We give ourselves this gift slowing down, this gift of listening, hearing all the things that have been said today, we know, we know deep down that there is not a place where God is missing. In nature, in the world around me, in my heart, the divine is present. Another way I can think of it is that I am one with all there is. I acknowledge that that treasure is within.
I acknowledge that if I feel it, if I want it within my life, it is possible. I acknowledge that I am listening. As we spend the next minute or two in that silence, begin to come out of this silence just nice and easy allow ourselves to feel that calm that peace and joy and that joy bless you taking in the breath maybe letting it out in the sigh opening your eyes noticing that flame on the screen that candle representing that light that is within you as well. Some would call that the Christ light within you. And once we're back, we simply say, Namaste. What is, I mean, by the way, what is namaste? We say that. It is Sanskrit, for one thing. Somebody tell me. The divine in me recognizes, sees the divine in you. Yes, it's a greeting. The divine in me recognizes or sees the divine in you. Appropriate, very, very appropriate. Thank you, Reverend Jim, for reminding us our treasure begins within. And speaking of treasures, this is uh, the time in our service when we are going to uh, move into the offertory. And this is a way of bringing that inner treasure and expressing it in an outer manifestation. We know that as we give, so do we receive. And this is when we bless all the gifts that come into Unity of Charlotte. So please share this prosperity blessing with me. Joyously, I give this gift, knowing the divine presence blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. The light of God surrounds us. We are light. The love of God enfolds us. We are love. The power of God protects us. We are power. The presence of God watches over us. We are presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well.